Welcome. Uh, so I am, uh, first of all, to those of you who are interested in knowing this, we had a beautiful and warm day in Palm Springs, nice and sunny, but in the 80s for probably the first time this year. So um, how about that? Um, so that was really good. Um, I mentioned that um, you should get your favorite libation. And so I'm going to do that too. I brought um, my favorite libation these days. Can you see the meat? Oh, I can't do this here. I'm pouring some Jameson into my favorite whiskey glass. And so you'll see it this way. Here's to everyone who's watching. Hi, Patty. Uh, so um, what I, I am sad, of course, that we can't have an art walk because it's something that we've been doing every month. Um, here at Back Street, and I can tell you that it's a ghost town here when I arrived um, a few minutes ago, not a soul around here, um, and that's as it should be. But so what I'm doing now, what we're doing is I am in the back, in the workspace, in the studio with the door closed, and uh, <laughs> so nobody knows we're here, um, and I want to talk to you about art. So one of my favorite things about the Art Walk is the chance it gives me to, um, to talk to people about what I'm doing. It's the best way I have um, to get reactions to the things I'm doing, but they don't happen uh, randomly. Um, <laughs> hi, Marcia. Um, I'm, so anyway, I've uh, come to these ideas randomly. They actually have come over many, many years of art practice and art ideas um, that I'm um, that I have been developing over time, but interestingly en enough for me right now is that um, I'm noticing that they're also not so far from where I started. So uh, where I started was the beginning of uh, when I first began to notice fine art in my life, and what I was noticing was um, abstract expressionism. So that dates me um, because that's a long time ago, but that was popular when I began to notice that there was an art world and that people were making art and it was art that I thought was really cool. Um, I've spent a lot of time uh, looking at this and studying it, but where I began was with very simple uh, drawings that were, um, directed by my parents toward architecture. When my mother noticed that I had skills um, that she thought could be help me become an interior designer, she told me, oh, but you don't want to do that. So uh, shortly thereafter, I was uh, directed to architecture. And I love architecture. The designs um, are absolutely beautiful. And they are also um, informed by um, the kind of work that I like. So what I've done here tonight is um, I wanna show you the things that I'm currently working on. Um, some of you have seen them and some of you have not. Um, and uh, so if you have questions, by the way, um, please you know send them in the comments and I'll, uh, I, since I don't have a selfie stick, I'm close enough to the phone to see what you're writing to me, so which is great. So um, where's the best place to start? So um, I think the best place to start is with some of the um, early artists and inspirations um, that I've had. So I would say because of the, um, the focus on architecture and the geometry of architecture, I became interested in... Um, Kandinsky's work, Vasily Kandinsky. Let's see if I can do this. So this is some of his, this is a book of his work. They're very geometric. Um, and he was, um, these, this is not where he started, of course. He was an artist at the Bauhaus, which was a great art school in uh, Germany um, and was closed in the 30s uh, by the Nazis. And so... Um, his work was considered degenerate um, because it wasn't traditional. 
um, only traditional art would be considered okay. So, um, so um, that's to me, it's quite interesting because I think that that art is absolutely spectacular. Um, one of the things that I've learned about uh, Kandinsky, he had a very spiritual bent, but for him, the spirituality and the art absolutely came together. Um, he, um, he wrote about spirituality and art, and I've recently learned that he had something, do we call this a condition? I don't know. He had uh, something called synesthesia, which meant that his um, ability to, his, his senses would get mixed up. So if he was listening to music, it would affect the colors he chose, and, um, and he did listen to music. This is what's known. He listened to music when he worked, and many of his pieces were um, named, the series were named um, according to some musical stuff. So there's a series of improvisations and a series of compositions, and that's meant to uh, relate to his ideas about the crossover of music and color and, uh, and design. So I, that, of course, very exciting for me. But one of my favorites, which uh, you may not be able to tell much difference here, is uh, Juan Miro. Uh, now Miro, here this is some of his work, and if you're familiar with his work, not all of it is as quite as colorful as that. Those are paintings. Um, he's often considered a surrealist. I think that might be because, um, if we look at this book, there are figures in this work. Um, and there are symbols. So where Kandinsky is only doing shapes and lines and colors, bringing them together. And if you've been, um, you know, on things on like Twitter and other social media, you'll see these wonderful videos of Kandinsky's work floating in space to music, which I think um, is probably similar to what might have been going on on his mind. Uh, so you have those two things going on, but what's intriguing to me now, as, uh, as has been all along, but is now coming out, uh, is more of uh, the work of artists who are not as organized. So in particular, if I can find another Kandinsky uh, picture, his organization of his shapes, let's see if I can get that on, there we go. The organization of shapes is very obvious. He had an intention and he organized the shapes. Now, while I think that the same is true for this other artist, um, here, this is a little less uh, smooth and slick. This is uh, Michel Basquiat. And um, I saw his work at the Broad um, maybe two years ago. And I was really fascinated because even though, like other artists, um, of his, uh, of his genre, um, even though it looks kind of sloppy and even juvenile to some point, there is a great uh, strong sense of composition. So there's a great intention. So what I try to do when I'm working is I try to, um, to find um, the balance between those things. So a lot of this is, and for a lot of artists I'm sure, uh, balance is very important, but I've done that in a couple of different ways. A little more of this. Um, so let me come over here. In 2012, some of you know, some of you have heard me talk about this like so much you're tired of hearing about it. Um, I went to Ireland for two months um, where I did artwork. And one of the things that happened for me there was um, I returned in the beginning of that time to drawing, drawing being the most basic art form. Um, you know, I've been doing that since uh, actually <laughs> since 1974, I can tell you. Um, and that was where I started. But when I was working there, I discovered um, after a rainstorm, these beautiful leaves on the ground. And so these photographs are photographs I took of the leaves that I found, and then some of the simple uh, line drawings that I did of those leaves 
Um, let me see if I can get that better on the screen. And I, what was interesting to me at that time, a couple of you whose names have shown up here will know Judith Waylau. She had introduced me to the work of Ellsworth Kelly. Well, Ellsworth Kelly is famous for doing one huge canvas of a single color. A famous minimalist. I'm not going to try and lift this book, but he did um, he did drawings throughout his inc- entire career, and he did very simple contours and very simple line drawings of his work. So let me show you this. Let's see if you can see it. There we go. I can see that it's there to some extent. So this is something that uh, that Judith taught me about at that point uh, in time, and I was really impressed. So I kept um, I kept doing that, and I love the simple uh, the simple lines. So it's it also adds to the um, the geometry because it takes away a lot of the details. And um, even though in works like Kandinsky's um, there are often a lot of details, they're simple details. And they're repetitive details. And uh, so you can see some of that in there. Um, And I'll show you now uh, the most recent uh, thing that's behind my shoulder here. Um, A couple of months ago, if I walk farther away, you'll see it better. A couple of months ago, I did a mural in a friend's house. um, And Roy, uh, you've always wanted me to work large. The mural was eight feet tall and 12 feet wide, one of the largest pieces I've done. And we did it on maple plywood. And I got very excited about that because the maple plywood is very rigid, very flat, and nice and smooth. So um, I went to Lowe's and I bought some and I got, (laughs) I got myself Oops, a hand handsaw. Um, <laughs> oh, is that fun? And I cut out the shapes and started to do a painting. Um, it's similar to some of the other paintings I've done. You'll see them in a minute. Um, there's something that seems to be coming out of my my, my mind, my brain, in regards to this uh, work. And um, it's about uh, layers of shapes. So um, I just cut another piece yesterday and see if I can show you. It's on the table here. This will become the next one. So I cut it with the table saw. I'm very lucky to have this wonderful table saw. And um, I've done it so that it'll stand. uh, See if this works. Probably can't. You probably can't see this. I've got it. It's about an inch from the wall. So there's a a piece behind it that makes it stand out from there. (laughs) Demonstrate the jigsaw is what Teresa's requesting. Um, I'm I'm gonna think about that and do that in a minute. Um, So the other things um, that are happening for me um, are some of them are on this side of the room. So um, I'm doing pieces with wood and some of them You've seen, some of you have seen these. And these are something that came out of um, a sleepless night uh, when these crazy images were in my head and I kept going with it. I keep following it. So once again, what I'm looking at are the shapes. So I'm looking at juxtapositions and um, juxtaposition of color and texture and shape and a little bit of technique. Um, so I've added the wood to some pieces and I continue to do that. Um, I'm prepared, uh, with a few more pieces. 